I think from the time my first book was published and this is it, um, the biggest question I get when I do book signings or visits um, or talk with anybody just at a casual meeting, they always want to know where you get your ideas. I read such and such a story, how did you make that up? And the whole thing is, ideas are everywhere. They're everywhere around you. And every story in this book started with an idea. Sometimes it starts with um, a comment that you've overheard. May not have ever seen that person before. Probably will never see them again. But something that you heard, maybe even behind you, you may never see them, uh, triggered something within you. And the title story for this one, Three Letters from Teddy and Other Stories, uh, is, is that type of situation. Um, I was going to a Christmas party with uh, my husband and I, with, uh, with two of our friends, and she was substitute teaching that year for a um, teacher who was on maternity leave. Well, her husband said, tell her about the presents you got today. It was their Christmas party at school, last day of school. You know how teachers always get scads of presents at, at Christmas time. So she told me about this, this gift that this child had given her. She didn't say if it was a boy or a girl. She, of course, didn't give a name. She said it was a, a, a rhinestone bracelet with some stones missing and a little tiny bottle of dime store perfume. And she said there was hardly any in it, but there was some in it. And she, she said that it was very touching to her. Well, as soon as she said that, it was like I had been zapped back to my fourth grade class. And uh, the story just happened immediately. In, the, in my mind, I immediately saw the whole thing because I knew how the child felt when he or she, let's call him he, uh, gave that gift. I knew exactly how that child felt, uh, very humiliated, and how grateful the child was when my friend, his substitute teacher, made a big deal over it and thanked him profusely for it. In my case, in the fourth grade, my teacher was a Mrs. Kleinard. And uh, she was a wonderful teacher. Everybody loved her. And I wanted to give her a present. And my parents said that year, no, you drew a name at school and you drew a name at church. And we can't afford to give everybody in the world presents. <laughs> and teachers don't expect a present from everybody. Well, maybe not. But I loved that teacher, and I wanted to give her a gift. So I bawled and I boohooed, and I carried on for quite a while. And uh, finally, my grandmother said one day, she said, come on outside with me. And she went to her closet, got a shoebox, and we went outside. Well, she had lots of pecan trees in her backyard. So she says, we're going to give Miss Kleiner a Christmas gift. And I said, I'm not going to do that. Oh, she says, you're going to be surprised. She's going to love this gift. And so we did, I, I wouldn't, had no intention of giving her that gift, none whatsoever. Well, I went home and I told mom I wasn't gonna do that. And she said, oh yes, you are too. You have cut a shine. You have bawled and boohooed and carried on and your grandmother found a way to give your teacher a gift and you're gonna give her that, that box of pecans. Well, we didn't have any wrapping paper, so Mom says, well, I think it much, much nicer. My, my grandmother said, I think it'll be much nicer if you, you know, you, you do the paper yourself. So she cut up on a brown paper bag from the grocery store and handed me some crayons. And she says, now draw me some Christmas trees and some snowmen. And we went on and on. And I did. I still had no intention of walking in that classroom with that homemade Christmas present. Well, of course, Mama drove me to school, and so I had to go into school with that thing. And I walked into the classroom, and here were all these presents on the, on the desk. And, uh, oh, it's so pretty, all the pretty bows and all the pretty shiny Christmas wrappings, and here's my... So I walked up, and I kind of shoved it up under some other things, and I thought, well, by the time she gets down there, uh, I'm sure that um, the bell will have rung. Nobody will know. It didn't work that way, so she opens it, and as soon as she got to my present, she said, oh, look at this. Well, a lot of the kids really made fun of me and hurt my feelings and made ugly remarks, and I felt about this high. 
Well, Miss Kleiner opened it and she goes, oh, oh, and she went on and on about all these nuts and said about how her in-laws were coming and how she was trying to bake fruitcakes and they couldn't afford to go buy nuts for it because they were so expensive. And she just really made me feel like that gift was so special. So when this child in this story, uh, I, I knew exactly how Miss Kleiner would have reacted. She would have had, she would have put on the bracelet and she would have had all the little girls line up and she would have given them a little dab and that's what I had the teacher do in this story because I knew Miss Kleiner would have done that. I have had more correspondence, more phone calls uh, on this one story than any other uh, and I think it's because so many of us can relate. Um, some of us relate to the child, uh, some of us can relate to the teacher, uh, but for some reason, a lot of people really relate to this story. When it first came out, it was first published in a magazine, because I started out writing for magazines. And when my husband read it, he said, you wrote that about me, didn't you? I said, no. So he proceeds to tell me this story, and it was very similar to this. And I thought, well, my goodness. And from that point on, so many people did. And uh, I was talking to a teacher one time, and she said, my guess is probably every teacher out there who's taught any length of time could probably have a story similar to this.